Hey, what is up guys? Today we are going to learn how to well, how to rotate our uh, input vector, so the one on the left over here, rotate it using the camera transform rotation. So, so I'm putting that towards the back of my scene and then I go forward, it actually goes forward. Um, if you're following this video after watching the virtual joystick, then you should realize that your input are on the weld axis which is totally normal. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to transfer your world axis uh, inputs in a, I guess, local axis input using this very camera transform or any camera in the scene. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in this scene right now, we pretty much have two joysticks. One of them is to control the camera, as you can see, and the other one is to control the player. Now our issue is that say our camera is facing towards the back of my scene and I press forward, my player still follows the world axis and that's not something we want for a game. So basically we would like our player, so his input over here, this to be rotated using the very camera transform, so the, the position the camera is facing. Let's start by looking at my movement script, what I use to actually move my player around. So I am using a rigid body and the add force method over here. These fields over here, so the move speed, the drag and the terminal rotation speed are all used for customization on my end. Um, the really important stuff to have is a vector that we're going to be using for moving stuff around. So my move vector is pretty much what I said every frame. I calculate that every frame using my player's input and then uh, it goes through various operation and then I use that to actually add my force, as you can see down here. Also, I will be taking a reference towards my virtual joystick, the one we made in the last episode, so if you are interested in having those virtual joystick on your screen so you can play with uh, your smartphone, your iPhone, or your Android phone, whatever, if you're interested in having this very virtual joystick, then you can go ahead and click on the video on the screen right now. It is going to take you to a video which will pretty much just show you how to make it. Okay, so that's what I'll be using. If you do not want to use a virtual joystick, don't worry about that. Just simply use the uh, the normal input get access vertical and input get access horizontal. So these lines over here are for those people that uh, do not use the virtual joystick. We can still do this without. Okay, so let's keep going. I have my rigid body and I also have a reference to my camera's transform, which is pretty much is going to be useful for taking that information of where exactly are you looking at, which rotation are you assuming right now, so I can rotate my vector using your rotation. Okay, now let's go down here. In my update, every single frame I set move vector is equal to pull input, which is a vector tree that I calculate over here. Really, really simple um, input taking function. So I declare every single frame a new vector tree that is equal to zero. So I pretty much reset my direction every frame and I say direction.x is going to equal the horizontal axis on my input and then same thing for z, vertical axis and if it's above 1 then I simply normalize that. Then I return my vector and this is what goes inside my move vector over here. After that I use that very move vector to simply call my move function which uh, moves my player. So our problem is that we take the input from the player, but uh, we never rotate it using the camera. So in between these two lines over here, we should rotate our move vector, um, pretty much just using the camera strength wall. So here we get the original input over here we should rotate our move vector and then we should simply move. Okay, so we're gonna need a function for that. We are going to go down here and declare ourselves a private vector tree that we'll call um, something among the line of rotate with view. So the vector tree I'll be returning is the move vector after the rotation has been done. So I can go ahead and write that over here right now. So let's just say move vector is equal to rotate with view. Now down here we have to actually code that mechanic. So the first thing we'll need is we are going to make sure that we have a camera transform. So if cam transform 
is equal to null actually let's do is not equal to null so if it is not equal to null so if it has a value then we do our logic and if it does not we'll do an else so else so if we do not have a camera transform, we are going to go ahead and uh, assign it. So for my case, it's a little bit special uh, because I don't actually have a camera on my scene. Now, if you have a static camera that is on your scene right now, you could simply say cam transform is equal to camera dot main dot transform. Oh, not tra transform. So basically what this line means is it is going to find the camera with the main camera tag on it in your scene and it is going to take its transform. So in my case, I do not have a camera in my scene and that is because I instantiate it when I start my game. So I'm going to have uh, to find another way to actually assign this value. So this is for those of you that uh, have a camera in your scene, you can use this line. and for me I'll be using something else so camera transform is equal in my case that's a get component ball camera dot cam transform so basically um, I have a ball camera component on the very same object as my ball motor so this is pretty much the uh, script that controls my camera and inside of there I have a public transform that is called cam transform in which I assign the very cam transform in the start function so yeah, this is pretty much just my um, my camera script for this game. Okay, now let's go back. So just assume that you have a camera transform. When we do have one of these, when we do have a camera transform, I can go ahead and uh, the next frame, because remember this is updated every single frame. So the first one, we're just going to skip it. Okay, if you don't have a camera transform, just don't worry about it. Try to set it. And in the next frame, if you have one, then we'll go ahead and do our logic. Now our logic is really, really simple. We simply have to declare a new vector3 that I'll call direction. And direction is going to equal cam transform dot transform direction. And it's going to take in parameter another direction. In this case, this is our move vector and that's very it you can just do a return uh, direction here now this is going to work but I like to do something more than that I like to make sure that my uh, vector is not going to be messed up on the y-axis so say you you're playing with slopes and hills in your game and you have some kind of uh, it just hills or slope pretty much if you have that kind of stuff in your game then um, sometime it might mess your move vector because your move vector has a y component and it's going to rotate using that as well and it's just going to mess your input and you don't really want that so in order to fix that what I like to do is I like to say direction dot set and I'll do direction dot x I'll say zero so I make sure to totally kill that um, value and then I do direction dot z so pretty much this is the same exact vector as it was but I remove the Y component. And then when I return it, since we actually lost some uh, length in that, in that vector, I do direction dot normalize times move vector dot magnitude. So we return it to its original length, pretty much. And also, um, since this is a function that returns a vector three, it has to return a vector three, then down here we'll simply say return move vector so it doesn't change if uh, we don't have a camera transform assigned and if we do have a camera transform so if camera transform is not equal to null then we return this and that's pretty much it actually now let's go see in game what it gives us so say I'm putting my camera uh, right towards my back of my scene and we go forward as you can see it actually goes forward using the camera transform and that's pretty much it guys that's how you rotate a input vector using uh, the transform of your camera so I hope this was helpful to some of you if you liked it or if you learned something please leave this video a like also if you have any question or comment please leave them in the comment section below also subscribe for more tutorial 
Again, guys, thanks for watching, and I will be seeing you in the next episode.